Happy New Year, everybody. It's 2021. <laughs> friends welcome back to the earth tones girl podcast this is earth vlog number 51 my name is denise if you are new here you can find me on the web as earth tones girl i am most active on instagram i'm also on ravelry uh there is a ravelry group um and an email address which is earth tones girl at gmail.com to returning viewers welcome back I haven't been here since the beginning of December. Uh, oh my gosh, where do I begin? Where do I even begin? <laughs> I'm so happy to be back here with all of you today. Um, oh my gosh, I let's start with Vlogmas. Let's go back and start with Vlogmas. Um, I did two weeks of Vlogmas and I was really, really having a great time. And then all of a sudden, honestly, I feel like I hit a bit of an emotional wall and just I didn't have it in me to continue um it's so interesting I was talking to a very good friend of mine about it and I just it just started to feel a little unreal to me um like I was trying too hard so I just I just stopped and you know what it's okay it's the second year in a row that I've gotten to about that halfway point and then stopped so maybe Someone's trying to tell me something. I don't know. But either way, um, the two episodes that I did do, I had a really, really wonderful time. Um, thank you to everybody that watched, uh, that stopped by for a visit. Thank you so much. And to people who were following me on Instagram and just all the comments and, and everything. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, we'll see what happens this year. We're two minutes into the new year. So... Who knows what's going to happen, but um, yeah, and I was starting to feel a little guilty about it. Um, oh, there goes my puppy. There goes the puppy. I think he just woke from his nap, but um, I was starting to feel a little guilty about not finishing, and then I thought, you know what? That's, that's, there's no place for guilt. It just, it just stopped, and that's okay. So I am back now. I am so happy to be here with you. I'm going to pause for a second, take care of him, and I'll be right back. <laughs> He's happy now. <laughs> we just had to take a little potty break, but he's all better. Um, so yes, no place for guilt. Happy to be back with you. Um, just a little recap on the end of, how did we spend the, the last two weeks of, um, of December? Christmas was different. I know it was different for many of you. Um, it was very, very quiet. We were fortunate enough to see my parents for a little bit and my sister and brother-in-law um, very briefly. But again, it was it was just very different. So it was Chris and the kids, my husband, the kids and I. And um, yeah, we just, you know, we opened presents on Christmas morning and made breakfast. 
took care of Nepo. Nepo opened his presents. <laughs> um, it was just fun. It was just us. And it was different. Um, and I was missing family terribly, desperately. But there was also something nice about the quiet um, and it being just the four of us. We've never had that. We've never had it be just my my immediate family before. Um, and there was something special in that, really, really special. We got to focus more on the kids um, instead of just the swirl of family fun and chaos that usually ensues when everybody's here. So it's, it's it was all about finding excuse me, it was all about finding the joy in this, the newness of the situation. And and I think we were able to do that. So um, what I was going to include in week three, um, week three or four was going to be footage of my mom and I making a um, traditional Bajan or West Indian fruitcake. And um, it was really, really nice too, because I haven't made one with her in a while. Um, Again, because of, of quarantine, she does, even though it's a traditional holiday gift uh, or a holiday bake, um, once in a while she will make it at Easter and uh, send it to um, her siblings that live here, one of her siblings that um, lives close by. So I, but because of quarantine and everything, I hadn't been with her when she did that. So it, it was really um, nice to just kind of hang out with her for a little bit and, um, just bake with her. We were still masked and had the kitchen windows wide open. It was just the two of us, but, um, it was so nice. So that was really lovely. And, uh, then New Year's Eve, we just, again, super quiet. It was just us. Honestly, the kids were, CJ, my son fell asleep about, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 30. Um, he finally, he was like, all right, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> um, and even that was a little different. Um, he went to bed and then my daughter and husband and I just kind of curled up in, in our bedroom together here in our bedroom and um, just watched the ball drop and we gave each other hugs and kisses. And I always call my mom and, and my sister or they call us, but we always talk within minutes of, of the new year. And um, yeah, we did that. And it, it was just sweet and wonderful. Um, then we all went to bed. <laughs> That was it. No toasts with wine or anything like that or champagne. We just quietly went to bed and that was really nice too. Um, which And this is, that's the perfect segue. I feel like, I don't know about you, but I got a comment from someone um, within the last day or two on Instagram that um, I think people were going into 2021 with this expectation of the minute the clock struck midnight there was going to be this massive shift and we were all going to go back to normal and the joy was going to return and um, the virus was going to be gone and everything would kind of go back to normal. And I know, not literally, but there was there was still a hope that we would be closer to that by the new year. And I know I was I was kind of guilty too. I was expecting and hoping for like this fresh start. And um, honestly, I kind of woke up the next morning and it felt really great, but I was like, oh, not much has changed. <laughs> so, um, and today is the 6th, and um, which is little Christmas. It's the 12th day of Christmas for any of you that are celebrating. And um, yeah, 12, okay, random useless fact, the 12 days of Christmas, for those of you that may not know, starts on December 25th and ends on January 6th, which is little Christmas aka the epiphany aka three kings day so um yeah just i'm full of random bits of information if you've been watching the podcast for a while you know that i ramble so that was my rambling for today um yeah so oh gosh and see i ramble and then lose my train of thought <laughs> welcome back <laughs> um yeah so it was it's just interesting i feel like um it's taken me a little while i i almost felt a little anticlimactic now and I've been in a little bit of a funk um not depressed not sad just kind of bleh meh <laughs> oh he's pussing again all right um okay well the joys of now podcasting with a much older puppy now <laughs> he's 14 weeks now um but okay I'm gonna pause I'm gonna pause again I'll be right back 
back again. <laughs> um, yeah, so just kind of a little blah kind of a feeling. Um, but I feel like I've started working out with my sister again, which is which I really, really need to do. And I had taken a couple of weeks off in December from doing that. And I really do think that was affecting my mental state too. I just needed to move. Um, and you know what? Now we're back to routine. Now we're back. The kids are back in school. Um, they went back to school on Monday. Today's Wednesday. And we're back in a rhythm. We're back in a routine. And I, I really do need that. Um for comfort, for a feeling of like security, I, knowing where I'm going to be throughout the day and what I have to do. Um, it, it's just more comforting for me than sort of that willy nilly holiday sort of feeling. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely huh, perking back up, waking back up. So it's, it's good. It's really good. Um, which brings me here. And I've tried to podcast for the, the last like two or three days and it just wasn't working. I tried over the weekend, the kids were around and, and my husband, everybody's talking, talking, talking. So I finally have a quiet day. <laughs> um, I'm umming a lot. I realized that too. I think I'm rusty. This is what happens when you are out of practice with this for a while, but it's okay. I, I know you guys... Um, don't mind if I'm a little scattered. So thank you for, for again, putting up with me and being here with me. Um, so what else? Projects. Let's talk projects first. And because I did get a little bit of knitting done. Um, then we're going to talk about my word for this new year. I did pick my word. I'm very pleased with my word, so uh, we'll talk about that, and then some make-along news, some knit-along news, and we'll cover that in just a second. So projects, I finished, what did I finish? One and a half pairs of socks, and two pairs of mittens. Actually, I just finished weaving in the ends <laughs> on um, my Christmas Eve cast on uh, last night. So that is now complete. But let's start with my, um, for those of you that were following along um, during Vlogmas, I was working on my 24 stripe advent, working on the 24 stripe advent skein by the Cozy Knitter. And I did finish those. I'm, I'm putting them on the blockers right now for you. Um, I did finish those and it's my third year. It's the third year that she's done it. It just keeps getting better and better. Oh my gosh. She started in 2018. I've been fortunate enough to get a skein each, each year that she's done it. Oh, I really should do like a side-by-side -side comparison with all of them because she keeps one-upping herself. They're so beautiful. So here are my finished... 24 stripe advent socks all done yay <laughs> um love them so much i did my standard um my usual 64 stitches 2.25 uh, millimeter needle and fish lips kiss heel contrasting cuff i did a mini sort of a smaller contrasting cuff um heels and toes there you go. Love them. <laughs> so comfy, cozy. And Christina, who's the incredible dyer behind this, she uses a, um, our bliss base is what she puts this on. And it is a slightly plumper. It's an 80, 20 blend. Oh, it's so squishy and soft and wonderful. I love these so much. And so, you know what? I'm going to show you. So you've got a little bit of leftovers after you make something, after you make your socks. So I made mittens. <laughs> Look at these, you guys. Oh my gosh, matching mittens. I didn't do any contrasting because I wanted to use as much of the leftovers as possible, but here are my socks. Here are my fingerless mitts. Oh my gosh. Let's put the socks down. I'm gonna put these on for you. <laughs> because I love them so much. Oh my gosh, this is the second pair of these, and I'll talk about the pattern in a second. Um, I just pushed this over my watch, which doesn't look, you know what, I'm gonna take my watch off, because it really doesn't do the mitten justice. Okay, that's so much better. Okay, ta-da, here they are. Look at these, you guys. 
Can you say warm and cozy? Oh, they just feel so amazing. Look at that shaping. Oh, look at that shaping, you guys. It's so, that thumb gusset is just a work of art. The design is amazing. This pattern is called the Everything November Mitts. And this is by Jen, who is Everything Shapes Us on Instagram. I believe she has this. I know it's available on Ravelry. Um, and I think she has it available in her Etsy shop as well. So I will link to her down below for you. Um, super, super quick knit. This was my Christmas Eve cast on. Um, so I cast these on Christmas Eve day. And just finished them last night i'm just gonna do my happy dance for a second <laughs> can you tell i've missed being here um i miss talking to people that get as excited about their making and their projects as i do so um so anyway back to these uh super quick knit super easy it is a three by one rib you can see that there. So it's three knit stitches, one purl. Um, the gusset comes beautifully, forms beautifully out of the three stitches, out of the three knit stitches. Oh, just gorgeous. I love them so very much. Um, and she does something really unique. I haven't done this kind of bind off in a really long time. It is a sewn bind off that perfectly mirrors the cast on, let me cover my face so it'll focus a little bit more, perfectly mirrors the cast on. She did a German twisted cast on, and if you can see, they look almost identical. Oh my gosh, it's fine little details like that that I absolutely love, love, love in a project. So this is my new go-to. I think I showed my, um, yes I did. I knit a pair of fingerless mitts in November and they were beautiful love that pattern again super simple just stocking it ribbing on the cuff stocking it there's something about this one the fit is even more snug I just I love this pattern so much I like a little bit of texture just to make it a little more interesting a little snug more of a snug fit and these definitely fit the bill so again I will link to this down below and as I said for the sharp eared among you this is the second pair that I made I made another pair. I think I might have shown them during Vlogmas. I don't remember, but here is the other pair. <laughs> Putting these on. Ta da! Oh my gosh. Here they are, and I made these um, to wear around, rare around uh, during Christmas. I walked Nepo with these on. Um, same pattern different yarn obviously and you know what I purposely didn't line up the striping this yarn is um, this was also left over this takes about I don't know I would say a little less than 20 grams per it's about 14 to 15 grams per mitt um, so if you have a mini skein they may not match but if you've got mini skeins this is too many skeins right here um, and what was I going to say? Yes, this yarn is Letters to Santa by Nomadic Nomadic Yarns. <laughs> Had to think for a second. No, um, Letters to Santa by Nomadic Yarns. And I just did just a contrasting cuff with this. This is my usual uh, Malabrigo Cordovan, that brown color that I use. Here they are. Now, if you notice, these look a little smaller than these. And the pup is just going to have to bark for a few minutes. Sorry about that, guys. It's literally the same number of stitches, but the yarn, this yarn is a little plumper than this. This is a 75-25. This is an 80-20. You just knit them a little bit longer. This is 35 stitches, 35 rounds on the, um, on the cuff here, and then 35 from where I split for the thumb, 35 to the edge love them i love both it's just the yarn i use the same size needles same pattern followed everything exact there we go love them so much so there you go those are my those are my projects you guys um and i said i also finished a sock i will show you that in just one second sorry about that this puppy has to go out to the bathroom 
about every hour and a half to two hours. <laughs> I think we're past the honeymoon phase of having this little guy at this point. I love him madly, but he's so demanding. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so the fingerless mitts, these were my Christmas Eve cast on, all done. And of course you have to cast on now. Not of course, but I decided to cast on for New Year's Eve and finished one sock already. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my New Year's Eve cast on. Isn't this, let's just look at that for a minute. There's so much going on in this sock. I love it so much. This colorway, I love the gray for the cuff. I think, am I a gray cuff contrasting convert? I may be because I just, it adds a warmth, but yet a coolness. Does that make sense? It just makes the sock look different. And I love the difference. This is by Legacy Fiber Arts and it is, it is their Imaginarium sock set and colorway. So the main color here is Imaginarium. Oh, I'm just looking at it because <laughs> it's just beautiful, beautiful. It has a really, I don't know, Huga esh am I saying that right? Huga, Huga. <laughs> um, there's just something comforting about it, um, and I just love it so much. I've been listening to the book Winter Solstice by Rosamond Pilcher. Pilcher, Pilchner. I'm sure somebody's going to correct me, <laughs> um, but I've been listening to Winter Solstice, and I am so in love with the simplicity of the story. There are moments that genuinely make me laugh out loud. It is a sweet, simple story. And I've been knitting this pair of socks as I've been listening. I don't know, the sock just perfectly matches the colors. Just, I don't know, for some reason it just, I find it just matches the book. I don't know why, but I'm just having so much fun listening and knitting this. I've already started, as you saw me knitting, um, I've already started the cuff on the second, so that will be, my goal is to finish that by this Friday, which is today's six, seven, by the eighth, um, or maybe by Saturday, because uh, then that would be a week from when I cast on. So yeah, Imaginarium by Legacy Fiber Arts. And I know these are available. This was a 50 gram sock set, so you get a 20 gram mini and a 50 gram skein, and this is a full, obviously full length sock. I mean, the cuff is maybe a click shorter by maybe 10 rounds, but it's still a full, uh, I'm sorry, the, the leg is a little bit shorter. I might make it maybe an extra 10 rounds, uh, but I will definitely have enough to make the second sock. So yay. So those are my projects, everybody. It's It's been a nice, slow, easy knitting month. Um, comfortable projects, interesting enough that I'm entertained and I'm loving them, but not complex enough that it's taking my focus away from the kids or, or family time. So yeah, those are my projects. So, um, you know what? I'm going to save my word for the end. Let's talk about make along. Uh, we, I have been, again, if you've been following me for a while and you follow me on Instagram, Hey Brownberry, <clears throat> who is Mars and I have been We've created a new um, sort of thing together and it's called Maker Minutes and it's just another way for the two of us or it's a, it's a new way for the two of us to interact with the community and share with the fiber loving making community um, together. So she has a podcast and her own little spot and corner of the of the interwebs and so do I but we decided to put those two together and it's called Maker Minutes and we've been having such an amazing time together we met we went live and met with everybody every Monday at about 12 30 during the month of December we had five episodes and we alternate between her feed and my feed because um, you need wh whichever one of us hosts the live for that day the other one will join in and we did it for five weeks in, in December, starting the last week of November, and we went through to the end of December, and it was so much fun. So, so much fun, just chatting with everybody, um, 
interacting with everybody, people's comments and questions, and we had a different topic every week relating to the holiday season. And, and we decided and announced in the last episode in December that we were going to be hosting a MIT along. It's called the Maker Minutes MIT along. So M M M I T T along. And I will um, link to the or share the hashtag so that you can see that. Um, and that starts on January 15th. So I'm so excited to, I have done mitten alongs, mitten knit alongs in the past. I did it two years in a row with Rachel, who's Treehouse Knits. And um, we were really f a little bit more formal in how we did it. We had one particular pattern, the two of us knit it together. Um, there was a kit for it. So, but this year we're doing it, I'm do A, doing it with Mars and doing it a little different, and um, it's just, it's geared toward all skill levels, whether you are a new mitten, if you've never knit mittens before, uh, you have a little bit experience, if you're super advanced, you can pick any pattern within that range, whatever suits you, fingerless, fingerless mitts, full mitts, color work, texture, um, cell boom mitts, I mean, it's literally sky's the limit, crochet mitts, it's all welcome. Um, if you weave and you weave a pair of mittens, amazing if you can sew a pair of mittens amazing again um so yeah it's this is we're just we want another way to share what the two of us love and what we've been doing with all of you and january and february just feels like the perfect time of the year it's the heart of winter we can't go anywhere anyway <laughs> So, um, and it's cold and we just want to knit something snuggly and cozy and share our experiences with each other and with you all. So we are doing it exclusively on Instagram and that is going, and you use the hashtag in order to be eligible for prizes and participate. There's no official sign up. You just start knitting your mittens with us on January 15th and it runs through till February 28th to the end of February. So it's six weeks, totally manageable. And we are going to be handing out prizes twice at the midpoint. So about three weeks in and then at the end. And we're gathering our prizes now. And we're just, oops, is it fuzz on me somewhere? Um, yeah, and we're just going to jump in and knit mittens together, everyone. So please come over and join us. Their details are on my feed on Instagram. I will link to that down below. You can also find the same information on Mars's feed. And we've created a highlight. If you're familiar with Instagram, you can create little highlights on your main page um, if you want to spotlight a certain topic or Ta uh, have posts and things like that go into a particular topic. So we've done that. So any pattern suggestions that we're posting in our stories, you can find in the highlight. If you're looking for inspiration or you just don't even know where to start with a pattern. So we're putting some patterns in there for people to um, have a look at. So again, go and have a look at our feed on Instagram. Um, it's all there. And we're going to be knitting mittens uh, starting next Friday so excited um i've got a couple of ideas for patterns that i want to make so um i haven't narrowed it down yet there's so many <laughs> there's so much oh my gosh and i also um want to work on another project that i know is going to be a little bit more long term sort of my comfort knitting i know socks are my comfort knitting but first i just it's another i'll talk about that in another episode so um yeah, that's basically, that's the middle long and hmm, my word, it's sort of become a tradition, I guess, or a thing, a trend to pick your word for the year, a word that represents maybe who you are or who you want to become or little changes that may represent changes you want to make in your life or uh, a goal you're aspiring to, an intention you have for the year. And my goal, intention, what I'm hoping to achieve is balance. Last year it was confidence. And I felt very confident last year. I, I started my classes. I started teaching with Vogue. I taught with them in real life as well as on their virtual platform. I created the No Fair Sock Knitting classes on here on YouTube and 
I did feel confident. I felt sure of myself as a teacher, as a maker, and it was a wonderful journey. It really was. And I feel now like I've had a bit of a shift and I'm still a teacher. I'm still a maker, but I want to make more. And I have a box that I put all of my makes in for the year. And some of them I did give away, so they're not all in the box, but um, the majority of what I made is in the box. And there's not as much in there as I would like. Not because I want product, but I was teaching so much and doing a lot of knitting that was prep for my classes that I wasn't knitting as much for me, just for for Denise, for me, the maker. Um, I was doing a lot of work for Earth Tones Girl and I want to find more of a balance in this new year between Earth Tones Girl and Denise. I want more of a balance in my making, in my creating, outside of knitting, um, outside of fiber. There are other things that I'm interested in that I want to return to and pursue. Um, in family life, I want more of a balance with my husband because we feel a little sort of ships in the night a lot lately. Um, so more balance with him, more balance with the children. Unfortunately, I feel like the pandemic has increased a lot of our screen time hugely. And I know a lot of families are struggling with this and it's a, it's a hot topic for a lot of people. You can't take your kids anywhere. There's only so much outside backyard play if you are in an apartment and don't even have a backyard you're limited with what you can do and um so the screen time tends to go up the the amount of time you spend watching movies and playing video games and things like that goes up and i i really want to reduce that time somehow um just get them off the screens we play more games together it's more family time um more movie nights, more cooking together, baking together. So again, it's finding a balance with my creative world, with my family world, with my work world. Uh, I had an incredibly beautiful website created last year and I feel like it didn't get nearly the attention that it deserved and I really want to focus on that a lot more this year. I've already said no to some teaching opportunities for 2021 and that's okay. It felt so good to say no. It's okay to say no. There's always this fear, this FOMO, fear of missing out that if I say no to something, I'm not going to get the chance again, that I won't be asked to join again, or I won't be asked to participate again, or another opportunity won't come. And you know what? It'll still come. It's okay to say no. It's not balancing out for me right now. I, I have to, I need more of this and less of this so that I can be here. That's what I'm aiming for. So my word for 2021 is balance. And I'm so looking forward to, to exploring that and getting there and finding that balance. So what's your word? Share your word with me. How are your holidays? Talk to me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, let me know how you're doing. <sighs> this was fun. I'm so glad to be here. So glad to be sharing with you again. Um, and I hope to be back really soon. Happy New Year again, everybody. Hope it's off to a good start for you. And uh, I will be back really soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching.